What is up YouTube? This is Brandon here and today we're going to be doing a quick and dirty guide on how to overclock your GTX 1080 using the GPU Tweak 2 tool from Asus because that's the one that came with my card. So a real quick overview of the GTX or the GPU Tweak 2 is that it comes with two modes. It comes with the basic mode and the professional mode. We're going to deal with it mostly with the professional mode. Basic mode you can see here it has some basic uh, stats of your card. Um, it has three basic profiles which are OC mode, gaming mode, and silent mode and it gives you a little grid here kind of what they do but they're pretty much useless for our purposes because we're going to be creating our own profile. On the left side you have your uh, statistics for your card which you can drag down to see more and you can also customize to see you know whatever you want to see. You can also uncouple it so you can move it away. For our purposes we're going to leave it, uh, whoops, we're going to leave it coupled together. Alright so enough of that let's go into the professional mode. So the first thing you need to do when overclocking your card is you need to start somewhere. So in our case, we're going to start with their highest overclock mode. In my case, I have the overclocked edition, so it comes with a really high base clock to begin with. But that's what we'll, where we will start working from. So first thing we want to do, we pick overclock mode, we apply, okay good. Next, we're going to go down to power target. You want to uncouple this. You're going to increase the power target to the maximum amount, 120, apply. You're going to increase the temp target to whatever you want. In my case, I like to leave it at 90. And then I'll explain what these mean. So the power target percentage and the GPU temp target in Celsius are the, the numbers that need to be hit for the card to automatically start to throttle. So in our case, we want to allow it to go to the maximum or 120% power before it starts to automatically throttle back the performance. The same thing with the temperature. Um, in my case, I like to leave it at 90. So until it hits 90, it's going at 100%. If it hits 90, it'll throttle back to keep it from going any higher. I've actually never had my car above about 76, despite the overclock, so that's fine. So once the power target and GPU temp target are set, we're going to go up and we're going to create a custom fan profile because the auto profile is horrible. It only uses fans up to 70% speed, so you're leaving 30% of your fan speed cooling potential on the table. So we're going to user define. We're going to hit the cog, and I actually already have a custom one set here, but uh, let's restore it to defaults. So you're going to have one extra one here to begin with. Let me see here. There we go. So you got to delete that by hitting right click. You're going to take this one and take it to wherever you want. I usually like to keep it in the mid 60s or 68 and 100%. So what this means is that by the time it hits 68 degrees it's going to be at 100% fan speed. So from 55 degrees to 68 degrees it's going to go from 38% fan speed to 100% fan speed. And anything after 68, 100% fan speed. This keeps my temperatures pretty low on the chip. Like I said, I've never been above 76. So we'll apply, save and apply. Good. Now, first thing you want to do once you set up all the basic stuff is you want to find out what your maximum boost clock is in megahertz for the GPU. So to do that, you take your starting number and you'll add, you know, 5, 10, 20, depending on how low you're starting. In my case, I'm starting really high, so I would only add 5 or 10. So let's say hypothetically we added 10 or, yeah, 10, so 1946. We hit apply. Then what you're going to do is you're going to run a benchmark. In my case, I like to use Firestrike by 3D Mark, but you could use Heaven 4, you could use Furmark, whatever you want, something to stress out your GPU. Run a benchmark. As long as it completes and you don't see any artifacting, you're going to increase this again. So take it up another 10, 15, whatever. Hit Apply. Run the benchmark again. In my case, because my particular card can only handle 1944 for a boost clock, if I went to 1956, it would fail the benchmark. So at that point, fails the benchmark, I back it off, let's say 5, and or whatever, hit apply, run the benchmark again. If it passes but it's a little unstable, then back it off a few more. In my case, I ended up at 1944 as my ideal. So once you figure out what your max ideal is, you take it back to what you started with, in my case 1936, then you're going to go down and you're going to do the same thing with the memory clock. You're going to take the speed, you're going to up it by 1 or 200, you're going to hit apply, you're going to run a benchmark. Is it stable? Yes. Move on to uh, part B. Do it again. And you just keep doing that until you run into instability or the card maxes out. In my case, I was able to max out the speed and my card was stable. So good for me. Once that's done, 
take this back to whatever you started with. In my case, it was around 10,000. So we figured out what our GPU boost clock was. We figured out what our memory clock was. Now we want to raise our boost clock back to whatever our max stable was. In my case, it was 1944, which isn't that much, but my card comes factory overclocked really highly, so that's okay. So apply. Next, you're going to increase your memory clock by you know an iteration. You're going to hit apply, and you're going to run your benchmark. Is it stable? If so, add a little bit more. Apply run it again. Is it stable? If so, add a little bit more. Rinse and repeat until you run into instability or it becomes maxed. In my case, I was able to max out the memory clock. So, these were the final stats for my overclock. I was at 1944 boost clock. I had maxed out memory at 11,010. My memory, uh, or I'm sorry, my power target was at 120 and my GPU temp target was at 90. I don't care about the frame rate target and I couldn't do anything productive with the voltage. When I ran into instability here, I would try to add a little voltage to stabilize it. It actually made it worse. So my particular chip cannot handle any changes to the voltage. I tried changing the memory clocks and the GPU clocks in conjunction with voltage and power targets and whatever. No matter what I did, if I added voltage, it decreased the card's performance. So I just left the voltage at stock. So the best overclock I could get is this. As you can see, it's right here, overclock one. So apply. So using overclock one, in here it says 1944, but in reality, the actual clock speed is 2,038 megahertz. So your clock speed is actually going to be a little higher than what it is in the actual tweaking software. I think they have a boost feature. So as you can see, that added you know around 90 or so uh, megahertz to my actual speed, or 86, whatever it is. So keep that in mind. If you don't get to 2,000 here, don't worry about it because you're probably over 2,000 on your actual core clock. So as you can see, I got a 1710 score in uh, Fire Strike, so that's pretty good. I'm in the 95, my 95th percentile, good for me. And these are my basic stats. But yeah, that's a quick and dirty way to uh, overclock your GTX 1080 using the ASUS GPU Tweak 2. Hopefully you guys uh, get good lottery, good luck with your chips, and you can overclock them even more than I could do with mine. Thanks.